So since when the subject, let's discuss how exercise and cancer actually affects glycolysis and glucose transporters. And let's begin by discussing exercise. So let's suppose we begin to run and initially we're running slowly. And what that implies is the skeleton muscle cells will be able to get that oxygen and the oxygen will go around all the different types of skeleton muscle cells. And so to basically meet the high demand of ATP molecules, the skeleton muscles will essentially begin the process of glycolysis. They will increase the rate of glycolysis, which produces ATP and pyruvate molecules. Now pyruvate under aerobic conditions will go into the mitochondria and the citric acid cycle will take place. And that will not only generate many more ATP molecules, but perhaps even more importantly, it will regenerate those NAD plus coenzymes that are essentially used up in step six of glycolysis. So remember in glycolysis in step six, we essentially use up NAD plus coenzymes and the process of glycolysis itself does not actually regenerate these NAD plus coenzymes. And if we don't regenerate the NAD plus coenzymes because we have a limited supply of these coenzymes in our cells, glycolysis will essentially end very quickly. And so under aerobic conditions, we use the citric acid cycle to regenerate those NAD plus molecules. Now, Let's suppose we switch from a slow jog to a very fast run. So now we're essentially sprinting. What will begin to happen now? Well, what will happen is the cells will basically experience hypoxia and hypoxia is defined as the state of our cells in which we don't have enough oxygen to actually go around all the cells. And so we have oxygen deficiency. Now, if the cells don't have enough oxygen, they basically cannot regenerate those NAD plus molecules in the citric acid cycle. And that's why they switch to an anaerobic cycle we call lactic acid fermentation. And lactic acid fermentation is actually able to produce those NAD plus molecules. And that means glycolysis can actually continue and produce those ATP molecules. Now, the problem with this process is it's only a temporary solution. Why? Well, because as lactic acid takes place or as lactic acid fermentation takes place, it produces lactic acid. And the lactic acid basically dissociates into H plus ions and lactate ions. And what that means is those H plus ions, as they build up, they will increase the acidity of that environment found within and outside of these cells. And that will basically, or that can, cause damage and harm to the cells of our body. And so what happens is the buildup of the H plus ions essentially inhibits the activity of the third enzyme phosphofructokinase, which, which essentially catalyzes the most important step, the commitment step of glycolysis. And if this enzyme is inhibited, that causes the inhibition of hexokinase and that essentially causes the process of glycolysis to stop. And so we're not going to be able to actually sprint for very long for this exact reason, because glycolysis stops and our skeleton muscle tissue will not be able to get the ATP molecules that they actually need to continue the process of running. Now, this is especially important for those skeleton muscle cells which are found far away from the blood vessels. Why? Well, because the blood vessels are the conduits that bring those glucose molecules to the cells. And these cells essentially uptake the glucose molecules by using these glucose transporters and the glucose is then broken down into ATP and pyruvate via glycolysis. So, we see that lactic acid fermentation will be especially active in those muscle cells that lie far away from blood vessels. And all the lactic acid fermentation will solve the problem of the ATP production temporarily. It's not a very good solution in the, learn, in the long term because it actually causes the deactivation, the inhibition of the process of glycolysis. Now, we know that over time, if we continue to exercise on a daily basis, we're going to basically build up endurance. We're going to be able to sprint for longer. We're going to be able to quick, uh, we're going to be able to run quicker. The question is why? Well, the partial answer is the following. 
because our cells begin to respond and they respond by producing a factor known as hypoxia inducing transcription factor which is HIF1. Now, what exactly is the function of the hypoxia inducing transcription factor? So, as the name implies, what it does is it essentially affects transcription. It essentially affects the expression of specific genes. Now, what genes with this transcription factor actually affect? Well, it's the genes that code for proteins and enzymes involved in actually breaking down that glucose and uptaking the glucose into the cell. So things like glucose transporters and enzymes involved in glycolysis are actually stimulated. So we see that this factor stimulates the expression of genes that code for the glycolytic enzymes as well as the glucose transporters that we find along the membrane of, the, of, of that cell. So here we have the summary of the process of glycolysis and we have 10 steps and so we have 10 different enzymes and seven of these enzymes are, are, are affected by that hypoxia inducing factor one, hypoxia inducing transcription factor one. So hexakinase, phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase, the three most important enzymes because they're actually involved in catalyzing the irreversible steps are essentially all stimulated as well as aldolase, GAP dehydrogenase where GAP stands for glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, phosphoglycerate kinase as well as enolase. So all these seven enzymes are essentially produced at a much higher rate and that means glycolysis will be much more effective and much more efficient eventually if we continue to exercise on a daily basis. On top of that, we also express many more glucose transporters, specifically the GLUT1 and the GLUT3, and what that does is it basically ensures that these cells that do lie next to these blood vessels are actually able to uptake those glucose molecules from the lumen of the blood vessels much more quickly and much more effectively. Now, what this doesn't fix is the problem that we have. So the fact that some of these skeletal muscle cells are found far away from blood vessels. And what that, so that problem is actually fixed by this same HIF1 molecule because it stimulates the vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, to basically stimulate the growth of those blood vessels so that these blood vessels can actually permeate into these hard to reach places that we find these blood uh, these skeleton muscles in so again if we continually exercise we have some type of anaerobic exercise that stimulates the release of the HIF1 molecule, the hypoxia inducing transcription factor 1, that basically stimulates the expression of the genes that code for proteins and enzymes involved in the process of glycolysis and also code for glucose transporters. On top of that, it also stimulates the VEGF molecule to basically go on and stimulate the growth of those blood vessels and that ultimately increases our endurance and allows us to basically carry out that process much more effectively and much more efficiently. Now exercise, as it turns out, is not the only process that uses this particular type of mechanism. Another very important and very dangerous thing that uses this mechanism is cancer. So cancer or cancer cells are these abnormal cells that essentially grow very, very quickly and very rapidly. So they divide very quickly and what that means is they have to have a very high supply of ATP to actually live and continue dividing and growing. And cancer cells to basically determine that they have these blood, uh, to basically ensure that they have these blood vessels next to them at all times so that they can receive the supply of glucose and then use that glucose in the highly effective process of glycolysis to produce those ATP molecules which allow them to actually grow and divide quickly. They also use this same mechanism. They release the hypoxia inducing transcription factor that's 
stimulates not only the expression of these enzymes and glucose transporters, but also stimulates the growth of those blood vessels, which can permeate into that tumor and around that tumor, and that ensures that the tumor actually survives and those cancer cells actually survive and grow. So, Cancer cells use the same mechanism to actually increase the rate of tumor growth. So cancer cells depend on glucose for rapid growth and division. And this can be especially problematic for those cells found far away from blood vessels because again, the blood vessels actually bring those glucose molecules to those cells in the first place. So therefore to actually adapt and to be able to actually survive under these hypoxic conditions, they use the HIF1 factor and the VEG factor to basically help keep the high energy demand and to allow for rapid growth and rapid proliferation of those cancer cells.